Let's just take a look at Dino in this video one more time because Dino has released a tool, a static site generator called Loom. Now the name is nice, but what does this exactly do and what is this tool about and yet another static site generator out there in the world of so many generators? Let's take a look and understand how this works. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So you can see this is how the landing page looks like and you can set up Loom in a single command when you run something like this. And the biggest selling point which they are working on with is that it supports a lot of templating, right? You can see C page.jsx exists, which is like a similar syntax to React if you have worked with React. But there exists a lot of other things like Markdown, for example, or Pug syntax or you know Liquid syntax, which is also a lot familiar to a lot of people who are working on templating engines for a long time. They also support a lot of ways to store data from YAML to JSON to JavaScript as well and TypeScript as well, which can involve fetching up data from other resources. So that is also good. So it's not an extremely new tool and it's also not an extremely new concept. Except Loom has existed for a while and static site generators have existed for a long time. Gatsby, for example, comes to my mind when even Next.js and Versal were not that popular. Gatsby was there, is still there, I guess. But Loom is an interesting move from Dino in the world of getting hold of developer base. Because if you think about it, tools like Dino, for example, even Bun and companies like Versal, for example, all of them, what they actually want is us, the developer attention. These companies need Need developers to use their products in order to make money. Even if you're not paying Loom or Dino directly right now, even if you use it, you're gonna talk about it to your fellow workers or co-workers. They might talk about it to their bosses and managers. And at some point, Dino might introduce some sort of service or enterprise support or something, which then means that these bosses or these managers are their customers, right? So it is obvious that Dino and these tools would want more and more developers to use it. So they're gonna release more and more shiny and polished tools. But I mean, I don't have a lot of experience with Dino because, you know, my stance with Dino has not been 100% positive for the most time because I don't really see eye on eye, like why do we have to bundle a lot of utilities into a single tool when it is not even fast. For example, Bun, on the other hand, is so much faster than Node. And yeah, I mean, it just seems like a collection of different tools, but that is a different story. That's a different thing altogether. What I actually want to know is how this tool is actually better in the market compared to docusaurus for example or other static site generators even you know using Next.js as a static site generator instead of using all its functionality of SSR and everything, you can just do SSG on Next.js all the way. So yes, of course, it makes sense because it supports a lot of data formats, but for the most part, you're gonna be sticking to just one data format, right? So it's great that it supports so much, so it will be easier for companies to migrate. That could be one good reason to use Loom if you want to migrate from a non-functional software or something which you don't like. Right here, you can see that Loom already has a bunch of portfolio or a bunch of websites which are using it for their static site generation and it feels perfectly fine. But at the end of the day, Dino and Loom really benefit if you as a developer and if I as a developer use it and ideally use Dino deploy services like that for hosting it. You can see it also comes with a bunch of configuration from SRC configuration to where the output should be to let's see what your 404 page should look like. For example, you can also add middlewares, which is again, something which is nice. And it includes a bunch of other options as well, which a typical framework would provide you. It runs on Dino, so that is one thing. So you can't use node modules, for example. I mean, Dino has introduced support for node modules recently, almost all node modules, not really every node module, but it, you still have to like import everything from URLs. And I don't know, like that's how Dino works currently. It does not support the node modules concept and NPM installation concept. So that is how you have to work with it as of now. It has its own advantages, but it also has its own disadvantages that you actually apparently opt out of the ecosystem, which NPM and Node has built over the last decade. So that is again one thing. But yeah, rest of the things, rest of the stuff looks 
good looks amazing we for example on codedam if you go to teach.codedam.com which is the documentation page for creators on codedam we use nextra over here for a static site generator nextra is a ssg built on nextjs and this is deployed on Vercel. and this is also working nice but obviously like loom also feels like a good alternative and a good thing if you are into dino me for example and the work which we do at codedam we probably would not be more Moving to Loom or a Dino based static site generator just yet because most of our stack is built on Next.js and deployed on Vercel, the front end things, which keeps it easy for us to manage projects also. But feel free to try it out and let me know what you think about this and how do you think it compares to other static site generators out there. Nextra, for example, is one which I know and which we use. Gatsby is another one. There are a lot of them from small to large size projects. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new about a new software. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.